Hey everyone, I'm Amy from thecrazycraftlady.com. Thank you so much for tuning in to watch my first Christmas craft of 2022. Yes, I know it's July and it's early, but it seems like every year when I make my Christmas crafts, by the time I make them and photograph them and share them with you all, it's so close to Christmas, it's like you guys don't have time to make them yourself. So I vowed to myself that this year is the year I get organized and I start making my content uh, earlier in the year. So it's July. I looked at the calendar yesterday and I realized that we have 25 weeks until Christmas. I was like, this is a sign. This is absolutely perfect. I'm going to make 25 Christmas crafts this year and I'm going to share one per week from now until Christmas. So if you're new to my channel, be sure to hit the like or subscribe button so that you can receive notifications about new videos because I will be dropping one new Christmas craft every Tuesday from now until Christmas. Whew, wish me luck. So my first craft that I made today is a reverse canvas craft. I'm super obsessed with the reverse canvas trend. I've made several before, so I'll link to them below. I'm not gonna waste any more time. Let's get making. Okie doke, here we go. So we are starting with a Dollar Store or Dollar Tree canvas. Um, you don't have to use a Dollar Tree canvas. I just like these because the wooden frame inside is like a square. It's got like a flat front, not like a beveled front, which will, I'll show you why I'm putting little beads on it. So I need a flat surface for the glue to stick to. But this is just like every other reverse canvas that I've ever made. I use my little fingertip blade. It's a Fiskars blade. You can use a razor blade, whatever, to just kind of cut away all of the stretched canvas from the wooden frame. Um, I leave the staples in, unless like one is loose, then I'll rip it out. But I just leave the staples in because it's going to be the back of your project anyway, so it doesn't matter. Unless you really, really want to remove the staples, but sometimes that's tricky, so I just leave it. So we're going to remove the canvas, and unlike my other reverse canvas projects, we're going to throw away that canvas or save it for a different project. And I just grabbed some wood glue and a paintbrush and these half wood beads that I will um, link to. I ordered like a bunch of them off Amazon. I want to do a bunch of cute little farmhouse projects, but just apply them all the way around the front of your wooden frame. So like I said, that's why I like the Dollar Tree ones because they're nice and flat. But just use that paintbrush to add a dab of wood glue to the back of each half wood bead and place them on the frame. So the long sides were pretty easy to do and the spacing worked out. I just started at one end and worked my way to the other end. For the two shorter sides, I kind of had to um, get creative because there was enough space where it was like a half room for a half one at the end. So for this, I set all of the half beads in place and then I kind of spread them out to make sure the spacing was equal. I'll try to zoom in on like show you closer what I did to make sure that the spacing was equal and then I glued everything in place. And then once you have everything glued down, just set that aside for the wood glue to dry. And while that's drying, pull out some jumbo wooden craft sticks. I've seen these at Hobby Lobby. These ones I think I got at Walmart. Um, but you want the jumbo kind so that they extend all the way across the back of that wooden frame. And then I just kind of place them on the back to see how many I would need. And then I pulled out just some plain old white acrylic craft paint. I think this is DecoArt Americana in warm white. And you could give like full coverage. I did not. I kind of let some of the wood grain show through. You can use a dry brush technique, make it as rustic or um, solid as you want. But just give everything a quick coat of paint. And the nice thing with this unfinished wood is that the paint soaks in quickly and everything dries super fast.
Okay, so now I'm setting aside the craft sticks to dry and my wood glue has dried on my frame. So now it's time to stain the frame. So I use this um, Americana gel stain, I think in oh from Hobby Lobby. And I just gave a quick coat on, well, I guess not so quick. There's a lot of nooks and crannies. So you wanna um, get in all those nooks and crannies. I just use like a one inch flat paintbrush. I bought like a 20 pack of them on Amazon. I use them for everything. And just get in all those nooks and crannies and get every, everything like a nice even coat. Don't try not to try to make it like a smooth coat and not like have any of the stain pool, but just go all the way around the frame. And then um, you can go back like with a tissue or a paper towel and just dab away any excess stain. Okay, so now everything is dry and it's time to assemble my little shiplap backing. So just flip the frame over and I used a paintbrush and I you could just use the tip of like the applicator tip on the wood glue, but I already had my paintbrush out. So I just used a paintbrush and I applied wood glue fairly generously all the way around the back of the picture frame. And then just place your little craft sticks painted side down so that they face the correct way. They face forward and in, in your frame. And just place those painted side down. And then while the wood glue is drying, set like a pile of notebooks. Like grab, I just grabbed a few like larger books and I set them on top while it dried. And then the wood glue will hold these in place pretty well. Okay, it's time to decorate the shiplap. So I got, I had this like leftover boxwood greenery little mini garland and so I just kind of rolled that into a spiral a few times and made a little mini wreath and that served as the O in the word joy and then I just had I had to sketch out with a pencil the J and the Y so just very lightly sketched out kind of where I wanted to go with with the letters and then I used my Waverly chalk paint in the color mineral mineral and I've had this chalk paint for a really long time, so it was kind of starting to dry out, and I had to water it down a little bit. So I'm kind of afraid this is my last project with um, this color chalk paint, and I've used it on everything because it's just the perfect warm gray, you know, grayish paint color. And I've had a hard time finding this at Walmart. Like my Walmart, the one that's closest to me, doesn't carry the Waverly chalk paint. So I think I may be on the hunt for a new go-to gray craft paint. So if anyone has any recommendations, preferably something I can get at Hobby Lobby or on Amazon, let me know. But I just painted uh, the letters J and Y. And then took a little dab of hot glue and added one dab of hot glue at the top of the wreath on the back and set that in place. And then I finished it off very simply with just some dollar store twine, tied a very simple bow and hot glued at that at the top of the wreath. But that is it. A very like very simple, very neutral kind of farmhouse style uh, Christmas sign. Do stay tuned because next Tuesday I will be bringing you the second installment of my 25 Christmas craft countdown projects. Until next time, happy making.